In this video I'm going to be briefly describing the process of muscle contraction, explaining the sliding filament theory and also talking about different types of muscle contractions. To start off a muscle contraction there must be a nerve transmission. This could be in a sensory neuron where it sends a signal to the brain or the spinal cord and or it could be in a motor neuron. The impulse or an action potential in a motor neuron travels along the axon by jumping over fatty sheaves called myelin. This process is called saltatory conduction. The action potential reaches the neuromuscular junction, which will be talked about in detail later in the video. This is where chemicals are released and this enables the sarcomeres to shorten. This process is called the sliding filament theory. An example of this could be catching a ball in basketball. The ball the basketball will be the stimulus and your eyes will be the sensory organs. Your eyes will send a signal to the brain which is part of the central nervous system. This happens for us through sensory neurons and this happens down the spinal cord which is also a part of the central nervous system. The, the impulse then reaches the motor neurons where saltatory conduction happens and the action potential reaches the neuromuscular junction. Then the sliding, sliding filament theory occurs which will be talked about in the next slide. Then the skill is performed, which in this case is catching the ball. The sliding filament theory is how the muscles actually contract. In the first image you can see the neuromuscular junction, which is where there is cont contact between a motor neuron and a muscle fibre. The bulb of the motor neuron contains synaptic vesicles containing ac acetylcholine or ACH, which are released through the T-tubules when the impulse arrives there. The ACH then triggers the release of calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is the fancy name for the calcium store. The calcium ions attach to the troponin and tropomyosin, which frees up the active binding sites on the actin. If the myosin has the ATP and the ATP is enzyme converts it into ADP and phosphate, the, my the myosin will form a cross bridge on the actin to pull the actin towards the end line. When a new ATP molecule binds to the myosin, it releases the actin and the, and the ATP is converted into AD, ADP and phosphate again, and the same process will happen. If the ATP is not converted into ADP and phosphate, then it will relax and the sarcomere will lengthen. The image in the top left shows a shortened sarcomere, which will occur over the whole myofibro as there are many sarcomere in the myofibro. It also shows the Z-disc, which is what the actin binds to perpendicularly, and this is the border of each sarcomere. It also shows the M line, which is the middle line of the sarcomere, and is what the myosin is binding to. The image on the right shows the I band, which is the region where there is only actin uh, filaments, and it shows the A band as well, which is the region where there is mostly myosin filaments. Finally, it shows the H zone, which is an area where there is no actin overlapping the myosin. Here I'm going to talk about different types of contraction. These include isometric contraction, eccentric contraction, and concentric contraction. Isometric contract contraction is where muscles contract, but they do not shorten. For example, in a plank, or in basketball, when you're bending down for in a squat position for a jump ball. Secondly, eccentric contraction is where the muscles contract and they lengthen due to gravity. For example, extending your arm on a bicep curl, or bending down before jumping for a jump shot. Thirdly, concentric contraction is when muscles contract and shorten, and they create, create a pulling motion. For example, flexing your arm on a bicep curl, or in basketball when you push up and extend your leg when jumping on a jump shot. 